Okay, so on Friday, we added to our types of factoring. Before Friday, we had done greatest common factor, we did difference of two squares, and then we did perfect square trinomial, and then on Friday, we added our perfect cubes and our factoring by grouping. So just a quick refresher on the cubes, if it's u to the third plus v to the third, then I cube root each of them, I square the first one, I multiply the two together, and I square the last one, and then the signs go same, opposite, always positive. So, so if it's a subtraction, u to the third minus v to the third, I still cube root both of them. I square the first one. I find the product. I square the last one. And then it is same, opposite, always positive. So if I'm looking at five, first of all, I have to identify that those are perfect cubes, 27, x to the third, and one are both. The cube root of 27, x to the third is what? 3x. Good. And 1? 1. 1. So it's 3x and 1. 3x squared, which is 9x squared. 3x times 1, so 3x and 1 squared, which is 1. And then same, opposite, always positive. Raise your hand if you've got that one right. Good. Okay. 6. What's the cube root of 64y to the third? Good. And 125? Five. Good. So the first parentheses, 4y and 5. Square 4y, so it's 16y squared. Multiply these two together, 20y. Square the 5. Same, opposite, always positive. Still good? Yeah? Okay, then came your factoring by grouping, and these are easiest to identify because they have four terms. I want to first make sure I can't take anything out, which you can't, and then I want to group them in their pairs. From the first set of parentheses, I would factor out the greatest common factor, which is what? X squared. Oh, sorry, x squared, yep. I'm going to put the three, sorry. x squared, and I get 3x plus 1. From the second set of parentheses? 3 plus 5. Good. 3x plus 1. And then what's inside the parentheses is the same. That's my greatest common factor. And what's left over gets grouped together. And then we said we would check that second set of parentheses because eventually these are going to compound and we're going to get more than one factoring in one statement. If that was the difference two squares, then I would continue to factor it. It's, it is a difference. One's a perfect square, but five is not. So I can't keep going. That would be as far as I can take it. Yep. So if it was uh, negative 25, you'd... Uh... If it was like x squared minus 25, I'd break that down to x plus 5 and x minus 5. Yep. Okay, so part three of factoring, okay, still in section four. This is just regular trinomials. So these don't have any special characteristics. They're not perfect squares. They're not perfect cubes, okay? They're, you're going to have three terms. That's the word trinomial. And we're going to break them down a little bit differently. There's going to be two types within this section. One in which the variable on the front does not have a coefficient. So if this would be ax squared plus bx plus c. That's your standard form of a, tri of a trinomial. The a is just the value that's on the front of the x squared. If you don't see a number there, that means that a is 1. And if that's the case, then we follow these steps. We're going to find the factors of the last term that sum to the middle term. So we go to the last term. We list all the factors. We find the two that when they add up gives you the middle term. If the last term is positive, then the both the signs are going to be the same. They're either going to both be positive or both be negative. They'll match the middle term. If the last term is negative, that means that one has to be positive and one has to be negative, and the larger will match the middle term. So if I look at x squared minus 7x plus 12, there's nothing on the front, so that's how I know I'm doing it this way. I go to positive 12, and I list all the factors of positive 12. So what two numbers multiply together to give me 12? Edward. 3 and 4. 3 and 4. I could have done 1 and 12. I could have done 2 and 6. I could do 3 and 4. I'm looking for the ones that add up to match this middle term. So this would give me a 13. This would give me an 8. This would give me a 7. That's the one that matches. But my sign is positive, and I need the sum to be negative. So all of these could have also been negative and the products would have still been a positive 12. That's how I get a sum of negative 7, but a product of positive 12. 
So then I do x and x, and the first one gets the first term, minus 3, and the second one gets the second one, minus 4. The order there does not matter. It could be x minus 4 and x minus 3, but that is the factored form of that trinomial. So if there's three terms, one, you always check to see if you can take something out. So like there's no greatest common factor coming out of this. There's three terms and the last one is not a perfect square. If that last one was a perfect square, I would test to see if it's the perfect square trinomial where we square root first and last and then double the product. Because 12 is not a perfect square, there's no other way to do this. I have to see if there are factors of that last term that sum to the middle. And it can still be prime. Like if that middle term was six, none of those factors add up to six. So it would be prime, which we'll get to in a little bit. But I basically say three terms, nothing to factor out. Last term is not a perfect square. I'm doing it this way. And then remember, you can check these, okay? I could foil this out to check it. And I'd get x squared minus 7x plus 12, which matches my question. Every single question in factoring can be checked. You just have to have the time to multiply it back out. All right. So go to one. Can I factor anything out? Like, is there a greatest common factor? No, there's three terms and six. X squared is perfect squared, but six is not. So I'm going to go through all the factors of six. What signs do I want them to have? Both positive. The last term is positive, which means they have to be the same. The middle term is positive, which means I want them to both be positive. So I can do 1 and 6, but that sum would be 7. That's not it. What else gives me 6? 2 and 3, and that adds up to 5. So I get x plus 2 and x plus 3. Now go to 2. Last term is negative 6. What signs do I need these to have? One's, one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. Go to my middle term. It's negative, right? So which one's going to be the, po the positive and which one's going to be the negative? Uh, positive 2, negative 3. Good. Bigger one's going to be negative. So I can go through positive 1, negative 6, positive 2, negative 3. The entire time I can be adding these in my head, that's negative 5. That's negative 1, so the second combination is what works, x plus 2 and x minus 3. Okay, go to 3. Factors of 8, but what kind of signs am I looking for? Both negative this time, so negative 1 and negative 8, that gives me negative 9, not that one. Negative 2 and negative 4, that gives me negative 6, and that's the one that works. So x minus 2 and x minus 4. Valley. Oh. If the last term is positive, they have to both be the same, and they ma you match them to the middle term. If the last term is negative, then one has to be positive and one has to be negative, and you match the larger term to the middle term. If you're unsure, just list out all those factors and keep adding them until you find the one that works. That just helps you a little bit shorten that process. Because something like a 24, you're going 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. So if you have to work all those combinations, it's going to take a little bit of time. Questions on those? So the X is irrelevant? I mean, it's not irrelevant. When you're finding the terms, it is. But when you'd multiply it back out, you'd get it back. All right, try them. Well, try four. What are the factors of negative 24 that sum to negative 5? Good. And? And positive 3. Good. Again, it's negative this time, so I need 1 to be positive, 1 to be negative. The middle term is negative, so I needed the bigger 1. So if I did 24, I could have done 1 and negative 24, 2 and negative 12, 3 and negative 8, and that's the one that got me the negative 5. Summer. Does it matter, like, what order you No, like if you did x plus 3 and x minus 8, yeah. totally fine. As long as the minus is with the 8 and the plus is with the 3. All right, go to 5. 
First of all, last number is positive, middle term is positive, so I need them both to be positive. Okay, so I need them both to be positive. The only factors of one are one and one. What happens when I add those together? Two. Am I ever going to get one? No, this is when it's prime. So if there are no factors of the last term that sum to that middle term, then my, it's not no solution, we just say it's prime. It is already as factored as possible. All right, go negative 18. So one positive, one negative, go to the middle term, it's negative. So I would do negative 18, one and negative 18, two and negative nine, three and negative six, and that's the one that gives me negative three. X minus, or X plus three and X minus six. And again, that order doesn't matter as long as the negative is with the six. How about seven? What are the factors of positive two that sum to positive three? Two and one. Okay, so what happens now when the term on the front is not one? These tend to be the ones that trip people up the most. I'm gonna show you two ways to do it, okay? But the first thing you have to identify is that there is a term on the front there that's not one, which means I have to do it one of these ways, okay? I can no longer just look for the factors of 15 that sum to one, it won't work. So the first way is to give yourself the parentheses Fill the first space in with factors of your first term. So what two things would multiply together to give me 2x squared? One and two. Good. x and 2x, right? And then I have to fill in this last space with factors of negative 15 and multiply the outer and inner two, add them together till I get the middle term. So with negative 15, my factors would be positive 1 and negative 15, negative 1 and positive 15, positive 3 and negative 5, negative 3 and positive 5. And then I literally fill those spaces in and multiply the outer and the inner until I get that middle term. So this would be a plus 1 and a minus 15. And then I'd multiply these two together, negative 15x, these two together, plus 2x, and I get negative 13x. Is that what I'm looking for if it's my middle term? No, so I try the next pair. Negative one, positive 15. And this time I get 15x minus two x, which is 13x. Still not what I'm looking for. So I go to the next one. Positive three, negative five. Outer two would be negative five. Inner plus six x, and I get a positive x, which matches what I wanted. So this is the combination I want to keep. Yeah. What if the first number isn't like a two? You have to test. So like if it's like an eight, you're doing x and eight, and then you're doing two and four. And as long as you keep switching the other two, that's enough. But so that's for me, if the front number and the back, like if the front number's prime, I tend to do trial and error because there's not too many combinations, right? Especially if the front and the last are both prime. If it was like a two X squared plus X plus one, I'm definitely using this method trial and error because it's not a lot of combinations to try. But the more multiples those numbers have, the more likely I am to pick what I'm about to show you because it eliminates all that trial and error. So this method is called trial and error. And then I'm gonna show you something else and you get to choose between them. Yeah. How do you know which order they'll put the three and the five? You have to keep going until they add up to what you want in the middle. So if you had made your first parentheses the two X and the second one the X, then those three and negative five would be switched. So you set it up because you would place the numbers and then you keep doing the outer and the inner until you get the one that matches the positive one. because you're, you wouldn't have gotten your answer yet. Yeah. It would be the right number, but the wrong sign. 
You, it wouldn't have been your answer. So you'd have to keep switching them. So it's like you go through and none of them work. Then you have to reverse them. So now I would go 5 and negative 3, negative 5 and 3, 15 and negative 1, negative 15 and 1. Then you would try those combinations. Okay. Yep. Yeah. How do you know it's like 6x instead of 3x? Because you're doing the outer 2 and the inner 2. So I multiply these two together. That's negative 5. And then I multiply these two together, and that's a positive 6. Outer and inner is the test to get your middle one. And again, this is called trial and error. Sometimes it stumps people, especially when you've got positive and negatives, and especially if they have a lot of terms, okay? If you're dealing with something like 48, where you have to test 1 and 48, and 2 and 24, and 3 and 16, and 4 and that's too many. So you're going to want to do this second method, okay? And you always do one or the other. It's up to you, okay? I, like I said, tend to, I go back and forth between, are they prime numbers to start with? Or do they have multiple terms? If they have multiple terms, I'm going with this method that I'm about to show you. So we just call this first and last because that's what we start with. There's not an official name for this. But step one is to multiply the first and last terms. Then you take that product and you find the factors of it that sum to your middle term. You replace the middle term with those two terms, which means you will now have four terms, and then you factor by grouping. So step one is multiply first times last. What's two times negative 15? Negative 30. Negative 30. Then I want to find the factors of negative 30 that sum to positive one. We're going to be add the x back in when we write it out, but you don't need it to figure out the factors. So what two numbers multiply together to give you negative 30 but add up to positive 1? Yep. Um, positive 6 and negative Positive 6 and negative 5. And if you don't see it, then you go through. You would do, this time you want the bigger one to be positive. So it would be negative 1 and 30, negative 2 and 15, negative 3 and 10, negative, not negative 4, that doesn't go in, negative 5 and 6, and that's where you would have gotten the combination. Then I replace 1x with the sum of these two terms. I add the x back in. So I do 2x squared minus 5x plus 6x minus 15. It's important that you do that step correctly because if I add these two back together, I should get this term. And that is why we are able to replace them. Negative 5x plus 6x would give me back that positive 1. Then I've got four terms, and we factor by grouping. Yep. Yeah. So what can I take out of the first set of parentheses? X, X and I'd get 2X minus 5. What can I take out of the second set of parentheses? Three. Positive 3, and I get 2X minus 5, and then the 2X minus 5 repeats, and the X plus 3 gets grouped together. Yeah. I tend to pick this one, I'll be honest. Like, I know it looks complicated in the beginning, but the trial and error, especially when you've got negatives, people make silly mistakes. We call... Okay. So it just stays as 2x minus 5? Because that's your greatest common factor, so we take that one out. Okay. And then you group together with left. We're going to do it a couple more times. So I'm going to do first times last, and then I'll go back to trial and error on these just so we can see both happen. But... First times last, so 2 times 3 is 6. Factors of positive 6 that sum to, I need a negative 5, so they're going to both be negative. Good. This is the one that gives me negative 5. Could you go back to the example and to finish writing it? Replacing negative 5 with them. Negative 2x and negative 3x plus 3. Now I've got four terms. So I group them. What can I take out of 2x squared and negative 2x? 2x, and I get x minus 1. What can I take out of negative 3x and positive 3? Negative 3. If I took out a positive 3, my signs would be wrong, and that's how I would know I need the negative. x minus 1. Now what's inside the parentheses is the same, so x minus 1 comes out, and I group together the 2x minus 3. Joey. How do you know whether to take out a negative number 
positive Depends on what the signs are in the parentheses on the first one. If this, if that x was a positive x on that first one, then I would take out a, a positive. Then I'm going to take out the negative three. If it was a negative x in that first parentheses, I would want to leave the sign, so I would take out a positive three. I have to do it until the, what's inside the parentheses match. Okay. So if the, if you take out the wrong one and the signs are opposite, then you change the sign. So it's just whatever works. Kinda. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to do that same one with trial and error. Two x squared minus five x plus three. So I set up my parentheses. Factors of 2x squared would be 2x and x. And then I need factors of 3. Now there's only one set of factors of 3. I can either do positive 1 and positive 3, or I can do negative 1 and negative 3. Positive 1, positive 3, and I do outer and inner. I get 6x plus x, which is 7x. Not what I want. I can go to the next ones. Negative one, negative three. And I get negative six X minus one X, which is negative seven X. Still not the right ones, which means I need to switch this. Negative three, negative one, and three and one. So I switch until I get what works. Do negative 3 here, negative 1, and I get negative 2x minus 3x, which is negative 5x. That's what works. Yeah. Yeah. The last method or the? The. Yeah. So if it was just 5 instead of 5x, you wouldn't? You couldn't. It has to be 5x. Otherwise, you can combine like terms there, and it would be a binomial. It will always be 3. So that middle term will always have an x. If it didn't have an if it didn't have a five if it didn't have an x here is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Then it would be two x squared minus five plus three, and that becomes two x squared minus two, and now it's no longer a trinomial. That's a completely different thing. It will always have an x in the middle. Mm -hmm. All right, go to nine. So I'm going to multiply the first times the last. 2 times negative 27 is negative 54. Now I'm looking for factors of negative 54 that sum to negative 3. Six, um, six, uh, negative Good. Positive 6, negative 9. That gives me the negative 3. I replace my middle term with positive 6x and negative 9x. And then I factor by grouping. From the first set of parentheses, I can take out a 2x, and I'd get x plus 3. Second set of parentheses, I could take out a negative 9, and I get x plus 3. Then the x plus 3 is what's in common, so that comes out first. And I group together the 2x minus 9. If you do it the other way around, the beginning's still not so bad because your trial and error, the beginning term is still prime. So I would do 2x and x. But then I've got to try factors of 27. So I'd have to do like negative 1 and 27 and 1 and negative 27. 3 and negative 9, negative 3 and 9. And then I'd have to switch the order until I found what works. So again, I tend to favor the second method, especially if the terms are not prime at the beginning of the end. If they're prime at the beginning of the end, then I use that first one. But it's up to you. My advice would be to just make sure you know both so that you could work with whichever one is easiest. Questions on that one? Okay, you try. All right, so if I look at the first one, I've got my first term is eight and my second is, my last one is 18. So this is a situation in which for the first term, if you were doing trial and error, you'd have to do one and eight, two and four, and then flip them. Eight and one and four and two. So that's four possibilities just for the first one. And then for 18, you have one and 18, two and nine, three and six, and then you'd have to flip them. So that's a lot of trial and error. And that's why I would say that's one I would definitely do first and last. It doesn't mean you can't, okay? But it means a lot of trial and error. What saves you is that they're all positive. So I know they're all positives. So at least I don't have to do positives and negatives, but it's definitely a little bit more work. So if I multiply first times last, what's 18 times 100, what's 18 times eight? 
144. So I'm looking at products or factors of 144 that sum to 51, which were what? Say that again. Oh, I was I thought I, I heard six and forty-eight. Three and forty-eight, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so three and forty-eight. So then when we plug that back in, eight x squared plus three x plus forty-eight x plus eighteen. And again, you could have switched that, it could have been forty-eight and then three. It still works out. I'm gonna group these from the first set of parentheses. I can only take out an x. I get eight x plus three. From the second set of parentheses, I can take out a positive six and I get eight x plus three. Inside the parentheses is the same. And then I group together what's left. And I should get 8x plus 3 times x plus 6 or x plus 6 times 8x plus 3. Raise your hand if you got it right. Okay, good. All right, second one. Again, you can do first times last or you could do trial and error here. How many did trial and error? How many did first times last? Okay. So negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Factors of negative 18 that sum to positive 17 are what? Go ahead, Evan. Negative 1 and 18. Negative 1, positive 18. So I replace my middle term with those. I factor by grouping. From that first parentheses, I can take out, and I can take it a positive x, or I can take it a negative x. If I take out a positive x, I have to change the sign on my second set. So I'm going to take out a negative x here, and I get positive 6x plus 1. And then I would take out, wait, did what did I do wrong? Sorry. No, that's right. And then I would take out a positive 3, and I get 6x plus 1. Now what's inside the parentheses matches, and negative x plus 3 gets grouped together. If you did it in a different way and you picked different, different numbers, your negative signs and your, like, could have been opposite mine, which is fine. If you have a negative 6x minus 1 times an x plus 3, that also works. I mean, an x minus 3. Yeah. Can you change which number has the negative? For, for the middle term, this time, you have to make sure that it adds up to be this. So the bigger had to be positive. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It has to match that middle term. Questions for me? Okay, so that's, that's all the type of factoring. In tomorrow's section, we will literally put them all together, and there will be multiple types. Like, so you'll have to do a greatest common factor and then the difference two squares, or greatest common factor, and then the perfect square turn well. There will be stuff like that, in which there are more than one. But this basically finishes all the different types of factoring. There is a video on um, the module that goes through all the different types. Like, so now that we've done them all, if you're like, I don't even know where to start, tonight's homework is just gonna be this stuff, but tomorrow it's gonna blend it together. So if you feel like you don't know where to start or what kind of um, strategies to approach it with, there is a video on it. We're gonna talk about it tomorrow, but there is a video on how to kind of approach that. Like, depending on the number of terms, which ones would I test for? Okay, because it's going to get put all together. And again, that's on that's Friday's quiz. All right, your homework is on WebSign. Okay, you're making sure you're showing me the work, especially if you're doing first times last, you're showing me the work for the first times last, all that stuff. And it's due tomorrow.